All right. Without further ado, I'm super excited because this is just a rock star of an individual. Uh, those of you from Legal Shield, she needs no introduction, but she's been with the company over two decades. And for those of you that have been at our international convention, uh, she's one to sing our national anthem in front of uh, thousands and thousands of associates. Mm -hmm. And for the, the thousands of people that were at Red Rocks yesterday, yeah. uh, you got to hear her sing at Red Rocks. So, you know, yeah. you too. You know, uh, the Rolling Stones, and then it's Karen Beverly. <laughs> so, millionaire club member. This means she's made well over a million dollars throughout her tenure with the company. A circle of champions, meaning that she's not only having success herself, but she's duplicating herself. So, I can't think of anybody to tell the Legal Shield story better than our own Miss Karen Beverly. So, thank you. Thank you. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Thank you all for having me here. Thank you for just a little bit of snow. I heard it was a little dusting, right? Yeah, so again, Karen Beverly. I am from Money Making, Maryland. I don't know what y'all call Colorado Cash. Colorado. Yes. Okay, so. Um, yeah, that's a new one. Yeah, okay. Um, so I'm just going to quickly go through. I will not keep you long, I promise. I'm going to quickly go through the presentation. That's why you're here. I'm excited to share with you mindset. To me, um, I always start off by saying, like, I can tell you how to sell a membership. I can tell you how to recruit. I can tell you all the different things about skill set. And some of this will be a little bit of skill set, but most of what we deal with is how our minds and what our belief level is. Um, because that's what's going to make you do the things that you don't necessarily want to do to have the thing that you say you want to have. Right? So we're going to talk about mindset. And the sidebar that I always give, too, is that this is not by chance. It's all by choice. You have to make the decision to change your mindset so that you can have something different, right? Okay, so that's what I'll start off by saying. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Um, and I'm reading the room a little bit. I feel like you guys are getting a little bit tired, so I want to make sure I wake you up again. I'm going to tell another joke, I mean, because that's what I do. All right, so it's another hospital joke. Okay, so what do you call a male leaving the hospital? Manuel. Uh, <laughs> uh, That's a good one. Good one. Okay, all right. <laughs> all right, so it's for some of you who are just meeting me today, um, my quick story, my background is that um, basically I was so caught up in life, okay, uh, that I forgot to pick my daughter up from school, single parent, and that was probably the worst thing that I've ever done, you know. Um, not intentionally, but I was working hard. I was at, I was at work. I was an HR representative. I worked there for seven days a week, actually. Um, and I love what I did, but I didn't love that part of it. It was a lot of work. And forgetting to pick her up from school made me realize I needed to do something different. It just wasn't going to work, um, you know. And so when she called and was like, Mom, where are you? I was like, I'm supposed to get you today. I didn't even realize it. Um, and I'll be vulnerable a lot today because I like people to know we're all the same. We're all the same, you know. Um, and some of you may have done some things you regret, you, you poor choices, whatever. That was a, a regrettable moment for me because, again, it made me realize that I just, the person that I love the most and that I was working hard for, I wasn't there for them, right? Mm -hmm. And I needed to shift that, and to make that shift happen, the shift had to happen here. And I needed to do something different. So that was the catalyst for joining Legal Shield. That was, you know, it, we talked earlier today with a young lady in the back then about how you can be around the source. I was around Mr. Self and Mrs. Self my whole life, uh, you know, that's my sister, but in the business as well. I got started in the business in the beginning and I started working it when director had all the success in the beginning and then I walked away from it. Well, they were there the whole time to encourage me to say, you know, we're winning, you can come back and do this. I wasn't ready. My mind wasn't ready. So again, it took that shift for me to come back, the student when the student was ready, the teacher appeared, right? What? And so I was ready to then do what I needed to do to get back in the game, okay? And there's nothing wrong with being the cheerleader for a while. I was always the cheerleader. I was always in the background. I still came to stuff, but I was in more of a support role. It was time for the cheerleader to now take the ball, right? And run and get the ring, okay? Okay, yeah. so, so, um, what I like to talk about is mindset, and I'll just go through, the, that's me, hello. <laughs> um, and the, the success that I've been able to have, great, you know, all the accolades are wonderful, but more importantly, being able to help other people is what really makes me feel like I've done something in the world, okay? And so, um, we'll just talk about mindset, and what mindset is, 
is the established set of attitudes held by someone. Whatever you, what your you know, established set of attitudes are, your beliefs are. And so what I just told you before earlier, your skill set is based on what you are capable of. Your mindset, however, is what you believe, okay? So if you don't believe you're capable of doing it, it doesn't matter what skill set there is, you're destined for failure. True. All right, and if, I'm, if I go too fast, tell me. Uh, yeah, wait. I know I talk fast. Um, but so when I thought about mindset, I thought of creating the acronym and we'll go through each word and then we'll be done, all right? So M, motivation, I, inspiration, N, navigate, D, dreams, sacrifice, and self-talk for S, Examplership for E, and then being teachable. All important parts of your mindset. And so we'll go through each one separately. Don't worry, if you didn't write it down fast enough, you'll get each letter. So M is motivation. And motivation is the state or condition of being motivated or having a strong reason to act or accomplish something. And we have a lot of different things that motivate us. I used, sometimes I say, close your eyes and think about what motivates you. I don't want you to fall asleep. So don't close your eyes. But do think about mm -hmm. some of the things that motivate you. And I'm going to share with you um, some of the things that motivate me. And I'll give a quote throughout each one. But motivation is what gets you started. And habit is what keeps you going. So you have to be motivated first, right? And then they do the things that habitually make us stay successful. But we have to be motivated first. So my why is what motivates me. Mm -hmm. What is your why? And we talk about the things that motivate us. So you're, it's two things. You're either moving away from pain or moving towards pleasure. Mm -hmm. Those are two reasons why we do anything. Okay? And so what motivates you to do something? My why. My why. What hurts you? What helps you? That's what why stands for. So you have to realize what your why is. And a lot of times I think we don't realize what it is or it's just not strong enough if it's not motivating you. So when you think about your why, you have to think about... Mr. Self did a training one time and he asked a gentleman in the room, what is your why, right? And he says, I just, I need to make more money. Well, why do you need to make more money? Well, because I need to buy a new house. Why do you need to buy a new house? He just kept peeling back the layers. Well, I need to buy a new house because my daughter and my son share a room and they don't want to share a room anymore. Well, why does that matter? Because my daughter's not happy. She's getting older and she wants to be in a room by herself. Well, how does that make you feel? Well, it makes me feel horrible because I don't know when I'm gonna do something that will enable me to get a bigger house to make her feel a certain a different way, and that makes me feel bad. So then your real why is your feeling of wanting to do something for your child. The money will come when you're motivated enough, right? So what is your why, and have you really sat down and thought about it? Because a lot of us say, oh, I just need to make more money. But what is the real reason why you need to do that, right? So think about what your why is. My daughter, like I said, was my initial why. That feeling when I forgot to pick her up from school, it, that, that was really that was all it took to say I got to do something different she still reminded me of that now <laughs> she's 29 now and I'm like dude I have paid you back I can you know so but yeah but she's my she was my why she was my initial why and your why will change throughout you know what I mean because she's not really I won't say she's not still my why but my my grandson is now Mm -hmm. taking her place <laughs> um, because now I want to be able to do the same things that I did for her I was able to come home I could you know keep her do help her get her first home buy her first car like put her through college with no student loans like so many things we were I was blessed to do because of this business now I can do for my grandson not because I have to but because I desire to do that right so so now your why may shift my grandfather um, was also my why mm -hmm. he was ill I was able to every day be there and feed him, take care of him, do the things that made me feel like a better daughter because my mom has two you know, sisters that, that they're older, they're tired. I was able to step in and do that for them. You know what I mean? So that was a huge deal for me. That was part of my why during my Legal Shield journey. And again, it will, they will shift, you will gain new whys, like my grandson is my new why. Um, you know, wanting to travel more with my partner, like different things that you want to do become your why. So, Know what your why is and have it be strong enough that it keeps you up at night, that it makes you say, I'm going to make the calls I don't feel like making. I'm going to go to the Super Saturday I don't feel like going to so that I can gain more knowledge, so that I can meet new people, so that I can become better. Because in 2024, I am more. We want to be more. And the only way you become more is to add value to yourself. Okay? And so coming here as I, oh, there's my grandson. So again, your why will shift. It'll become, as you become more, you will want more and better for yourself. Okay? That's a sexy little white right there. Thank you. <laughs> uh, and I know you understand. Um, this bonus it is in incentives. Something else that motivates us, guys. Who doesn't want more? Again, I've never met anybody that says, you know what, I want less this year. 
<laughs> right? I don't think I've ever come across anyone that says that. So bonus and incentives, and we are in the dream bigger phase of Legal Shield. There's more money on the table in bonuses and incentives than the, since inception, the, since this has begun with Harlan, with everything Absolutely. going on. Your opportunity now, my goodness, if you don't see it, you're not going to see it. Get up and go. Don't don't do that. But <laughs> but seriously, that it just the bonuses and incentives. Who doesn't more money? More, can y'all say more money? More, more money. money. Thank you. More Making money. sure you're still with me. But then the bonus, the the fun in the sun, the Jamaica. I would, you know, maybe Mr. Ward at the Pendry, he can tell you about the excitement of Jamaica, because this will be his second time going, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Once you hear the vision. You see people have experienced this, and it's just exciting. You want to be a part of that. So this is another motivation, okay? Another motivation is recognition. Who doesn't want to be recognized? Mm -hmm. We always talk about men cry for it, babies die for it. Everybody wants to be recognized. I don't, I don't care who you are. You can say you don't want to be recognized, but if you do something, sometimes we do do things in private. We don't necessarily, you know, I've paid for somebody's Starbucks and didn't need them to know it was me. But sometimes when you do things, you want people to know. We in here, we recognize everything. We're not ashamed to talk about money. If you get a ring, we want you, we want to recognize you. Mm -hmm. If you level up, we want to recognize you. Most people don't get that. When you go to work, nobody, when you do something that probably is a big deal to you or when you get a raise or a bonus at work, nobody comes in your cubicle and claps for you, <laughs> right? Yeah. But here you get to stand up, we get to shout for you, we get to see your name on the, in the, the lights. We have the communication show, so many ways that you feel uplifted and good, and then you get to see other people recognized, which not only helps you be happy for them, but it lets you know, gosh, I can do that too. So recognition is a huge motivation, right? Everybody wants to be recognized. So um, personal development was another motivation for me. If anybody knows me, I'm big on personal development. And I, I, meant, I had a, another joke for you guys. I have a notebook that I purchased. It's, it's from a, a WTF Notebooks. Y'all know what that stands for? Yes. Um, so I have a notebook, and on the front of it, it's, it's just a joke, but it says, people that I want to punch in the face. <laughs> right? So I was going to bring it and show you, like, oh, this is my notebook. But I'm personally developing myself because my old notebook used to say, people I have punched in the face. <laughs> <laughs> so personal development is a big deal because, again, when you become more, you attract more for yourself. Right? You attract better things for yourself. And personal development starts with reading and listening to audios. Mm -hmm. You've got to grow. Most people don't read. Not, some of the statistics that I looked up about reading are horrifying. Uh, because most people, once they graduate from high school, e not even college, high school, don't read a book again. <coughs> or don't finish a book. That's scary to think about. When we talk about all the adults that we have to deal with in life that aren't reading and aren't growing and their mindset is staying the same, that's a little bit scary, right? So reading is very important, and the book that I like to recommend is Dare to Lead by Brene Brown. It has taught me a lot in my legal shield career, just about communication, being a better leader, working with your team, being more vulnerable, which I'm gonna be today, you all will see. Um, but, you know, reading it itself, it puts you above average, okay? And then listening to audios, when you're busy, if you don't like reading, or if you get tired like me when you read, listen to it. You can drive down the street while you're in the car and listen to something. So listen to something. And then having an accountability partner. This is imperative because a lot of times you won't do something for yourself, but you'll do it for somebody else. Mm -hmm. It has to be somebody you care about <laughs> because it, it, you don't want to have an accountability partner who you don't care about disappointing, right? So it, can, it doesn't have to be someone in the business. It can be your child. It can be your friend. It's just somebody who you tell your goals to who will hold you accountable. All right, and somebody that strengthens you in your weaknesses, right? You, sometimes we have workout partners and both of you guys do um, make calls well, but you don't follow up well. Well, if neither one of you are following up well, how can you help that person to follow up? So you want somebody that you know makes you strong in an area and you can make them strong in the area and you can hold each other accountable. Mm -hmm. So that's so important to have as well, accountability partner. Um, and then mentors. My goodness, and mentors, I mean, they give you guidance, coaching, training, motivation, advice, so many things that we can learn from our mentors we don't have to go through. We can learn from their knowledge, right? We can see them make the mistakes first, and then we don't have to make those same mistakes. That's why we have them. So having a mentor in place is just imperative as well. Um, they can give you a vision that maybe you don't see for yourself. They can share their belief in you that you may not have in yourself yet. 
right? So a lot of times I had to borrow belief from other people in certain areas until I found that in myself. And I still do that. There are a lot, you guys might not know, I don't even really like speaking in public. Maybe you can't tell, I don't, it makes me feel so anxious. It makes me feel, you know, because you want to say the right thing. You want to reach everybody. Sometimes people are looking at you like, that's all you came here to say? You know, <laughs> you, you, have, you have all these different emotions up here. So I'm, I like focus on the one person who's smiling so I can like not focus on everybody else who's making me feel like that wasn't funny, you know? So it, again, having that mentor can give you that belief, okay? Um, and then last but not least, I'm big on affirmations. <laughs> what you speak to the universe is important, okay? And so um, some of my affirmation examples, um, I am in charge of my life. I'm able to balance my career with my family life so that both are in perfect harmony. I am healthy and strong. I'm a million dollar ring earner. I am a platinum executive director. And they don't all have to be about the business, but you can speak well of your life to the universe about any area, mm -hmm. right? A lot of times I've heard people s just say the worst things, like, God, I, I just feel so sick today. Well, can we not say it, right? Uh, and don't get me wrong, when people ask how you're doing, and we, you wanna be honest, but sometimes just say, you know what, I'm great. Mm -hmm. Because you will, t your mind will manifest what you say. Yeah, it, it will, it will manifest what it says, and so, I'm going to talk about affirmations a little bit later, so I won't go any further with that. But um, also with mentors, it doesn't have to be a physical person if you don't know anyone just yet or if you don't have access to someone you see as a mentor. Videos, books, th those are forms of mentors because, again, it's somebody you're growing yourself, you're learning from somebody who's written something that means something to you. Um, so, again, find a mentor and, and stick with that, okay? Um, so next we get to I, which is inspiration. A divine influence directly and immediately exerted upon your the mind, upon the mind of your soul. Um, and so, when we think about inspiration, we want to aspire to inspire before we expire. <laughs> All right, that's Eugene Bell. So, um, you want to aspire to inspire before you expire. And some things to think about: um, what inspires you? That's the first question. What inspires you? And, and you know, you can jot some things down. Take some notes, but what inspires you? And when I think about some of the things that inspire me, like music, books, people, um, who are you hanging around that makes you want to do more, right? Who inspires you? What inspires you? Um, and when I think about who inspires me, it can be a number of people. You're, my daughter inspires me now. Um, I was a young parent. She's amazing with my grandson. So she inspires me still. I'm a parent still. She inspires me to be a better mom. You know, you, you can find inspiration from anywhere. Um, who else inspires you? Your pastor. They inspire you to be spiritually sound, right? Um, your friends and your family, they may inspire you in ways to follow your dreams or to do certain things that you see them doing. You can be inspired by a lot of different things. Um, and then who do you inspire? That's an that's a important question. What are you doing with your life that is inspiring someone? Right? So when I think about that, I have to think about even the way I'm dressing, the way I'm speaking, the way I carry myself, because somebody's always watching you. Mm -hmm. So who are you inspiring to be better? Who are you inspiring to be kind? Who are you inspiring to live their life to the fullest by your example, mm -hmm. right? So who do you inspire? That's a, that was a tough one for me to think about because I know sometimes when, even when I disappoint myself, I'm like, you know, somebody might have seen me not fall, follow through with something and now, you know what I mean? So we have to make sure that we're always doing the right thing so that we can inspire others around us. So um, this is where I'm vulnerable, and I'll talk about how I was inspired by the system that's in place. Um, and so being inspired by the system that's in place, it was because I didn't have to think about it. I didn't have to try to figure out Legal Shield. Um, and so part of my story I was sharing with you, I stepped away from Legal Shield for a while. I was still in the support role, but I stepped away. I moved to New York to pursue my singing career. And before I left, I had built a pretty large organization. I was, you know, director because that was the permanent position that you could reach without having to qualify every month. Um, and so before I moved away, everybody was in the system. Everybody was plugged in. They were still going to the Super Saturday. They were doing the core commitments, and they were plugged into Mr. Self and to the team. So when I stepped away, they were still plugged in. What if I hadn't plugged them into the system, though? They would have stepped away, too. And so when I'm saying I'm inspired being vulnerable about the system, when I came back, man, my team had exploded. <laughs> but I wasn't there. 
They had exploded because I simply used the system. And so be inspired by the system. Make sure you're plugging everybody in. Get out of the way of your own team, right? So I got out of the way. When I came back, there was a millionaire club member on my team. There were, I mean, I think six executive directors. It, it was amazing, right? And so it enabled me to come back and get busy and level up quickly, right? So use the system that's in place. Be inspired by the things that are already set up for you. These meetings that Mr. Ward puts together and they're all of our regional managers, they're doing that for you, not for them. We're, I mean, we all benefit from it, but they're doing that for you. You've got to show up. You've got to come back with somebody. There's no excuse, and, I, and I, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying, I know that there are people that present way better than me, but this room should be fuller today if you are serious about growing your business, mm. right? Because you might take this back to the people that didn't come today, but they won't receive it the same, which is what we talked about, how important it is to get people out, to get people to come. So what's inspiring you to build your business better, right? So then we'll talk about inspiration. So next, let's talk about navigation. Navigation is to find a way through a difficult and complex situation with skill and confidence, or to find your way from one place to another or to help someone else do the same. So when I think about navigation, um, you will get all you want in life if you will help other people get what they want. That's a big deal. Because, and I told you, I, I'm I probably the biggest empath in the room. But when you have the feeling of being able to help families in over 40 states, my goodness, that takes it off of me. That makes it so much bigger than me, right? You want to help as many people as you can. And I'm vulnerable here because you can't do something. If, if you're not, my team wasn't using me. Let me, let me just, I'll be really transparent. My team wasn't using me, and I didn't understand why. And I knew I had just come back, and I was still learning things or whatever. But I finally had to say to myself, what can I do to help the team? Why aren't they using me? So I decided, and you have to be a big, you know, put your big girl panties on and ask mm -hmm. questions if you want the real answer, be prepared for the real answer. But I asked my team, certain people on the team, why aren't you using me? Because they would call me and say, hey, can you get me in touch with Mr. Self? Hey, can you see if Mr. Self can do a presentation for me? And I'm like, but I, I, I do the presentation, you know? Mm -hmm. So when I went to them and they, they were honest, and I had to be prepared for that, they said, you're not that good. And I had to eat that. You know what I mean? I was not as good as I thought I was, right? And it still, work, still, you still grow every day. I'm still getting feedback for, uh, from the things I do, from the things I share, from all of my presentations. I still go to other presentations. I still, every Wednesday night when another presenter does it, I watch it so I can still joke, so I can, wh whatever it is, so that I can get better, right? But I had to look at myself when they told me that because they all said the same thing. You're just, you're not that great. And I had to go work on myself. That was something that I had to do. Again, another shift in mindset because sometimes we're not doing as much as we think we are, right? But I was vulnerable enough to go to them and ask, hey, what can I do? So I worked on it. I worked on the presentation and I got better. So they would use me. But I had to figure out what I could do for the team first. So that was part of navigating through this system and through my team to see what could I do to be better, right? So that's what I did. I got better and they started using me. And I was happy about that. So, so how can you navigate? You can help your team grow by growing yourself, right? Once you grow, they grow, you're going to make more. Everybody wins, right? What about helping individuals find their strengths and majors in the business? That's a big deal. We have the will of opportunity. And a lot of times, I know for me, because I, was, I grew up in legal shield as a networker, I was recruiting networkers. I wasn't, you know, I didn't think it was a big deal to have solutions on the team. And now when you see the bonuses and the things that are happening in solutions, I'm like, what was I thinking? So now you have to help people find their niche. With, there's nothing wrong with 20 people on your team being solutions. You override, it's, it's no different. You're still leveraging yourself. You're still working with your team, right? So we have to learn how to help individuals with their majors in the business and be okay with that. And if you're not, if that's not your major, get out of the way <laughs> and put them in front of the Diane Kephart, put them in front of the people that can help them grow in that area since that's not your strong suit, right? That's how we can navigate. And another way, we can help to build trust in the business so people will admire it, study it, and perfect it. <clears throat> Guys, if, first of all, you have to do it first. 
right? You have to admire it and study it and perfect it. Master the mundane, know your business, know what you're doing, but then help other people on your team do the same thing. And how can you do that? Put them in front of the Melissa Peters class. We ha Bring them to the Super Saturdays, bring them to the national international convention. When you get out of the way, man, I had to realize I, I was the cap of my team. I'm, I'm at the 150K ring, awesome. Is that where I want everybody to stop? Absolutely not. If somebody goes past me, am I still gonna be working? They're still yeah. on my team. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So why wouldn't I put them in front of the Sheryls who have 200K? Why wouldn't I put them in front of other people where they can grow beyond me, right? That's a mind shift, I'm telling you. A lot of us say, no, that's my team. I got this. No, you don't. <laughs> you're hurting yourself because you're hurting them. And a lot of times they're either gonna walk away because they're not growing or they're gonna wanna work with somebody else. So guys, work, let them work with who they wanna work with. Let them see other examples of success so that they can get to their level of success. So that's how we can navigate. Now we're already on D, we're dreams. Dreams, now this is a big one because I think a lot of us, especially as we get older, and I'll, I can speak for myself, there are some young people here, but as you get older, you kind of stop dreaming. We say things like, man, if I only could. Man, I wish I could. Why can't you? Right? So when we think about dreams, your dreams are bigger than anyone else's opinion, and it took a long time for me to understand that. <laughs> a very long time. Um, and when you start dreaming again and see all of the amazing things that you can have in life, it makes it a little bit easier to do the sacrifices so that you can have those things. But you gotta dream again. That's why we're, th this dream bigger could not have come at a more perfect time because I find myself saying, you know, now that I'm older, I'm probably not gonna have this. Now that I'm older, I probably, you know, people are gonna look at me different, I'm not gonna be able to have the same thing. But what are your dreams? So we talk about what are your dreams? Do you still have them? What are your dreams deferred? What, what dreams did you have that you've put off? Yeah. Writing a book? Moving to a new state? Losing the weight you wanna lose? It, it's a new year, guys. We mm -hmm. all have our New Year's resolutions, but those are, those are our dreams. Things that we say we wanna do. Why aren't you doing them? What's holding you back? We have to dream again. And I mean, if you did your Legal Shield business more, could you possibly use that money to facilitate some of your dreams? Mm -hmm. Possibly, right? Because I don't think any of us woke up one day and said, you know what, I want to be a Legal Shield associate. I've always dreamed of that. <laughs> really? Nobody had that dream. <laughs> but what dreams you have could be fueled by your Legal Shield business. Mm -hmm. So why would we take this opportunity seriously to have what it is we really desire to have? Right? Does anybody want to share one of their dreams? Yes. Flying to the moon. We talked about that. And that takes money. <laughs> it takes money to finance that, right? Anyone else? I want to uh, open up an international language school. Mm. Uh, that's amazing. Also, again, also takes money. It takes time freedom, right? It takes being in the right environment where people could, I know you just had a conversation with someone in the back that says, hey, you know what, I actually have a building that, that needs a teacher. I, this environment is conducive to success because again, we're all thinking on different levels. Mm -hmm. So when you come here, you have an opportunity to, to dream again, to dream again. Anybody else? I, you guys, I used to wanna, um, don't laugh. I thought because I was, I wanted to be like the ringleader at a circus. I always thought that was so cool. But, um, you know, even singing again, doing different things, like, why are we not dreaming anymore? Mm -hmm. It's simply our belief level. You gotta shift your mind and say, I can have all of these things that I desire if I do the work. And if you do the work here, it gives you that financial and that time, that, that piece that's missing for some of us. A lot of us, some of us have all the time and not the money. Some of us have all the money and not the time. We want the happy, we want, we want it all, right? So what are you settling for by not dreaming? That's the scary thing to think about. And it's quite, I hope you guys are thinking about it. Yeah. Like, what are you settling for? What have you said to yourself, I can't have again? The husband, the money, the house, the, why can't you have it? Right? 
The future belongs to those who believe in the beauty of their dreams, and I absolutely believe that. I absolutely believe that. Somebody's waiting for your dream. Somebody needs to see you manifest your dream so they can say, oh my gosh, she did it. I can do it too. He made it happen for him. He opened his school. You know how long I wanted to do that? I can do it too. He's going to the moon. I never thought I'd be able to do that. But if Mr. Ward can do it, I know I can do it. Right? And it may sound so simple, but all it is is your, it's your belief in what you can do and what you can have. And I know, again, he's probably going to be like, I, I flew her out here to just tell y'all something that you already know. But again, maybe you needed to hear it from me. Maybe it needed to be today. Maybe it needed to be, I don't know what season you're in. But at some point, you've got to hear it from somebody. Right? Mm -hmm. time, time is not limited. Time is limited. I'm sorry. Time is limited. Our dreams are not limited, but the time is limited. That's what I'm saying. So, yeah. Um, now we're on S. Um, and a caveat here, too. I'll say a lot of times you guys think that you see people having the success that you wish you were having, but a lot of times those people struggle with the same things you struggle with. Mm -hmm. They just kept going. Yeah. They just shifted their mindset. That's all they did different. God is no respecter of person. Anybody can have whatever they want, right? So now we're on to uh, sacrifice and self-talk. And sacrifice is to surrender or give up something for the sake of something else. And then self-talk, talk and thoughts directed at oneself. And I'll start with sacrifice. Um, don't be afraid to give up the good to go for the great. Why would you settle for good if you know there's great out there? <laughs> right? So the questions I have for you here, what are you willing to give up to go up? That's a good one. And I, what I was willing to give up, that shifts over time. Um, a lot of you may not know. So there was a time in my life I was actually extremely ill and extremely overweight. What was I willing to give up? Sometimes we wait till it's too late. I waited till I was sick and on too much medication and I had to do it. Don't wait till it's too late. Start now for the things that you want. Sacrifice now. And so what are you willing to give up now to have the things that you say you want? We say we want so many things, but we are not willing to give up a lot to have it. And why is that? Do we not believe we deserve it? Do we not believe we should have it? What is the reason why? And so um, the, the real question, and this really, I always say it, it hit hard for me, was what are you sacrificing by not sacrificing? Mm -hmm. That was a tough one for me. And again, I was sacrificing time with my grandson, time with my daughter, like certain things because I wasn't healthy. Yeah. That's no fun. But what was I willing to give up? I finally had to say I can't eat that. I finally had to say, you're paying for the gym, go. <laughs> Give up Netflix for a moment and go to the gym. Give up Netflix and chill for a moment and go, and go, <laughs> and go to the gym. You know what I mean? But, and we laugh, but these are it's, it's so many things that are so easy to do, but they're so easy not to do. Mm -hmm. What's going to make the difference for you? Okay? So what, are you, what can you sacrifice? Can you sacrifice TV? That was hard for me. I, I, mm. all the, I'm just, I'm being vulnerable again because all the ones up here was hard for me. All right? Gossip. A lot of times we come to these events and we're like, oh, did you see what she had on? We're not saying, did you hear the amazing things she said? We're, talk, we're talking about the wrong thing. Yeah. What are you willing to shift your mindset and grow? Right? Did you see the stuff that Mr. Ward had on that screen for the Dream Bigger bonus? That's what I want to talk about. Okay? Junk food. Like meat all day long and you saw some in our room you know it's a work in progress but what what are you willing to give up to be healthy to feel different to look better to think different okay cussing you're christian but you cuss a little bit right <laughs> i mean you know gambling and i want my joke i bet y'all everyone in this room a hundred dollars you can't stop gambling <laughs> right shopping again sometimes sacrifice now sacrifice now look i just i that's the Kate Spade dress in the room that I want, right? <laughs> right? It, but am, am I in a position to get it right now? Or am I in a position to say, if I make a little bit more this month, then I can treat myself? 
that's a shift because most of us say, I want it now. Microwave society, we want it now. We don't want it. My mom gets on me all the time, like, Mom, pop it in the microwave. She's like, No, it's better in the oven. No, I want it now. But it's going to be so much better in the oven. It's going to be crispy and flaky in the oven. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we need to shift that. But what can you sacrifice? This is my list. What's your list? Anybody have something they need to sacrifice? You want to yeah. share? I'm trying to get y'all to make sure you're awake. Anybody? Anybody? Yes? Yeah, I think it's probably Netflix. Netflix? Yeah. And I, and drinking like I know that was something you shared yeah. earlier, just to feel better, mm -hmm. and not not for the rest of your life, but for a, a period of time so you feel better, right? Yeah. Anybody else? Yes. I'm being vulnerable. I like clubbing. I probably don't look like it, but <laughs> <laughs> I love clubbing. Clubbing. And what, what? Where could you be instead of the club? At home, building your business. Mm -hmm. At home, spending time with loved ones, right? Yes, ma'am. In the beautiful dress. Um, I was saying, I've been working on gossip. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a tough. I don't realize it, but sometimes yeah. I go a little too far. It's a, it's a thin line because sometimes we think we're just having a conversation, but sometimes it's like that. Really? You know? Yes, sir. I eat, I eat about four Reese cups a day. <laughs> <laughs> that's killing us. Yeah. <laughs> That junk food, that junk food. Uh, but again, and again, in this environment, we, you're safe to share. But it's like, again, you don't, you never know. Everybody in here, even if you don't want to raise your hand, you're struggling with something, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? And it's okay. But how can you shift it? What can you change today, right? All right. So the next one. Oh, sorry, I, click, I was supposed to click along the way. <laughs> it's self talk. Mm -hmm. My goodness, so this one, this one for me, what you say to yourself will eventually determine who and what you attract for yourself. Yes. Mm -hmm. This one is big for me, mm -hmm. um, and I'll tell you why. So, you know, growing up, people say stuff to you. We internalize a lot of things, and most of the time, somebody could say, 10 people can say, you're so pretty. Mm -hmm. you're, Christy, you are amazing. And then one person says, well, Chrissy, why did you put those earrings on with that dress? Now, all she thinks is, why did I, was this not a good choice? Not the 10 people who said, you are so cute. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That's how we think, okay? And that's just one instance. What about when you're a kid and your teacher says to you, you're never gonna amount to anything? Yeah. Who's still holding on to these things, right? And I said this one was tough for me because, again, you know, you grew, you grew up in a Christian family. You, you have your sister who's amazing and your brother are doing all great things. And then you have a baby at 16. Mm -hmm. And then you don't go to college. You do these things or you don't do these things. And it weighs heavy on you, right? Because you want people to think well of you and you want people to speak well of you. So you internalize these things and you begin to feel like maybe I don't deserve success because of these mistakes. But are you the same person as you were now at 40 as you were when you were 16? Mm -hmm. I sure hope not, yeah. right? So at what point do you move past that? At what point do you start saying good things to yourself? And what are you telling yourself? What do you believe about yourself? At some point, you've gotta shift that thought process. And again, I know I'm not the only one. And it may not be a baby. It could be because you don't have the degree. It could be because your older sibling was more successful in something you wanted to do. It could. There are so many different things that have happened in each of our lives that have made us say, am I worthy of that? Can I still do that? Should I have that? Because I'm, I, you know, I didn't finish this class. Can I ever go back? No. So what is it, what is it that you believe about yourself? and how amazing you are, and how beautiful you are. No matter if you need a haircut right now, or <laughs> whatever the case, you know, we say these things to ourselves. Sometimes we say it because we don't want somebody else to say it. I used to say, uh, when somebody, oh, you look cute, oh, I mean, this old thing, just say thank you, right? Because right? you, you got the compliment. Or I used to say, oh, I know I look like I ate a lot, because I didn't want somebody else to say, oh, mm. you're gaining weight. I wanted to beat them to the punch, but why? Why am I telling myself these negative things when I should be saying, you know what, I can lose weight if I just if I choose, or I'm beautiful how I am? Yeah. Because it's about what's inside. Okay? 
I mean, yes, we all want to look a certain way, but what about what's inside? Right. What's the real focus? Mm -hmm. And we and I, I talked about that through the month of December. I talked about like how you respect yourself. How do you respect yourself? Mm -hmm. What are you putting out there to tell people how to treat you? Because when you say those things, guess what you're doing? Giving them permission to say it too. Mm -hmm. And then now you're not only saying it to yourself, other people are saying it to you. How can you shift? Right? So you've got to speak good to yourself. Um, I was already vulnerable. I already shared that with you. So the affirmations, I told you I would come back to it. Affirmations are so important because the words that follow I am follow you. The words you tell yourself will be imprinted on your heart and actualized by your mind. What you don't believe, nobody else can give to you. If you don't believe it, it doesn't matter what I say. You have to believe it first, okay? So the mind doesn't know or care of, of what it hears is truth. It accepts it and works to manifest whatever you tell it. So when you say I'm sick, you're gonna tell you you're you're gonna get sick. When you say you're fat, you're gonna continue to gain weight or stay where you are. When you say you're not worthy, you're gonna allow people in your life that are not worthy of you. We do we all do it. So can we shift that? Who wants to make that shift? Yeah, okay. So the affirmations are important. We already gave you the examples, but write your affirmations out. Say them every day. Say them out loud. Speak them out loud to the universe. Say them every morning when you get up. That should be one of the first things you do. Devotion, affirmations. Can you imagine how different your day will start? Right? Because you're already going to come across the negativity. You're already going to come across the people that cut you off and I'm going to piss you off. Upset you when you're in the car on your way to where you're going to go. So, but if you start here, even if you get to here, you're still you're still okay. But if you start here, and that stuff happens, you're down there. Mm -hmm. So, can we start here on our own? Yes. Right. Okay. Now, exampleship. So, example example is a pattern or model as of something to be Im imitated or avoided. And then leadership is the position or function of a person who guides or directs a group. So setting an example for your leadership is exampleship. You guys with me? So leaders must be close enough to relate to others, but far enough ahead to motivate them. So you still have to be relatable, but gosh, you gotta set an example. You gotta make people wanna get where you are. Yeah. And I'm not saying I can't talk to you until you're an executive director, <laughs> right? But I can inspire you to become an executive director by being one and then teaching you what I did, right? Mm -hmm. So setting an example. This is what I was getting to earlier. You can't ask your team to do something that you aren't doing. Mm -hmm. You just simply cannot. You have to do the activity too. You have to show up too. You, you know, some people um, call people to come out today and didn't come. <laughs> like, well, I didn't go because you didn't go, mm -hmm. right? You have to read. How can you tell your team we're going to do a book of the month and, you, and when they ask you, well, what chapter are you on? Oh, I haven't started yet. Mm -hmm. well, what do you mean, right? You have to continue to learn. We all can grow. I don't care how much you know in this business. You can learn something from somebody. You can learn something from somebody. From, a, from an associate to an executive director, you can learn something from somebody. And that's what, again, showing up here so that you can learn those things. You have to be accountable. If you make a mistake, apologize for your mistake. No. Be accountable. Be accountable for your actions. If you don't show up, let the team know why. I mean, I'm not saying tell all your business, but let, let them know, hey, I'm not going to be able to make it, but you still got to get there, and I won't miss next month. Right? Be accountable. And so the vulnerable part here, got, so I used to be that person who would be up in front of the room saying, oh my gosh, the bonuses, the incentives, you've got to get PC qualified. And I wasn't PC qualified. I had fallen out, what, you know, whatever the case may be. How can I teach that? How can I tell them to do something? And then they ask me, well, how long have you been in? And I'm like, well, I'm not in right now. That's not motivating. Mm -hmm. So I had to, again, th now this is the skill set part because what did I do to shift that? What did I do to get back in and stay in? Well, I had to fill my funnel. Yeah. It's as simple as two exposures a day. And that's 
when I say you can do that in less than five minutes, so for the full timers, if you're doing two exposures a day, shame on you, right? I mean, part time, we that's what, that's the core that we accept. And I'm saying good exposures. I'm not saying giving somebody your card and not getting their number. I'm not. I'm saying a presentation, two exposures a day. That's you've got thirty people in your funnel. How can you not get back into PC when you have that many people to follow up with? What about your referrals? That's part of the skill set. Asking for referrals, right? So who said, Mr. Kepar? Who who owns the business that you know? Follow your dollar. Who are you paying to do a service for you that doesn't have your membership? Again, shame on you. Right? So these are all things that we can do to get back and stay in Performance Club. If you're talking, if you have 60 exposures, you mean to tell me you don't think you can get three people to sign up for something? I think you can. And you don't have to be good at it. Because you can use me, you can use the videos, you can use all the, we have the system that's inspiring. <laughs> it all, it all, it's all inclusive. It all goes together, right? But all it is is shifting the mindset to use it. It's shifting the mindset to say, you know what? I'm going to make those calls when I don't feel like it. It's shifting the mindset to say, you know what? My daughter needs this, so I'm going to go ahead and do it. I'm going to make it happen today. It's all mindset. It all goes together, right? So now like, we're, we're almost done. I told you I wouldn't keep you long. Right. Teachable. Who's teachable in the room? Are you? Mm -hmm. Are you? So who's going to shift their mindset today? So, okay. Uh, okay. So teachable is capable of being instructed and taught, right? Your team will only reach their potential when you reach your potential. So when you're teachable, your team will be teachable, right? And this is it's funny because can you follow so that you can lead? A lot of us, I'm saying us because I'm including myself, don't know or didn't know how to follow. You gotta be able to follow first. You gotta be able to be a servant leader, care about it, do all the things that are necessary to be in the environment so that you can get the knowledge and then you become the teacher. But you have to follow first. Can you get out of your own way? A lot of us get started in the business and they say, oh, I, I've been in sales my whole life. I don't need this system, I know what to do. We don't, we don't need your system. <laughs> Legal Shield has a system, right? Can you unlearn your way? Again, a lot of us come in with these notions of, I know what to do, I'm gonna make my own flyers, I'm gonna set up my own website, I'm gonna do. Again, we don't need your expertise. We've got billion dollar teams that are spending lots of money to set these things up for us so that we don't have to figure it out. So who's really teachable? Who's really doing the things that you're supposed to do in your business that we're telling you that you should do? Are you doing two a day? Honestly? There are a lot of people who aren't, and again, I'm, in, I'm not, I don't want you guys to think I'm speaking down. I was guilty of this. It's, it's so easy not to do. It's easy to see somebody and say, oh my God, they would be so good on my team, but I'm not gonna talk to them. Oh, I don't have on the right thing. I don't know what to say. When I started, I was, hi, it's nice to meet you. This is my card. That, that was all I had until I got, and then next time I would say, hey, hey, nice to meet you, Karen, this is my card. Can I get your number? Then you add, hey, oh my gosh, this is what I do. You have your two minutes spill. I, you look so sharp, I love your tie. I'd love to work with you. Can I get your information so I can share something with you? But if I didn't start doing something, it was always gonna be, <laughs> okay, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. So who's really teachable? Because you all said you were. Mm -hmm. Do you, you know your 10 core commitments? Yep. Are you missing Super Saturdays? No. no. Some of us have missed, right? And I, again, don't get me wrong, things happen, we get sick, things happen. But are you really committed when the weather's nice? When there's another function that seems more fun, are you building your business? Right? So we have to be teachable. We, we have to be teachable and, and really teachable not pretending and not d just doing what's comfortable and convenient. Because a lot of it, it's easy to do what's convenient. Especially on, you know, it's, it's nice out, I, I don't have anything else to do today, I'll be there. But what about when it is dusty? <laughs> what about when you have other events? What about when you have a little, sniffle? you know, don't bring, don't bring sickness, but we make so many excuses. And I call it peanut butter. Peanut butter, it's raining. It, any excuse will do. Why didn't you come, peanut butter? 
right? So I was already vulnerable. I told you I was not BC for my life. Um, but, but be teachable. Be teachable, right? What's that? Hold on, let me make sure. I skipped a lot of stuff. Oh, no. So teachable. I, I didn't share with you on that yet. So teachable is um, the three-way calls. I was not doing three-way calls. I thought that my way was better. <laughs> um, and that's why I said, are we really teachable? Because I knew, like, I know my friends. I know what to say to them. But when my friends got started, and because I had recruited them on my own, and I didn't put them on the you know, line with someone to say the things that you say on a three-way call, <coughs> they thought when they got started that they had to do the same thing. So I was killing my own business because they weren't in the system now. They were doing it my way, and my way doesn't last, especially if I recruit. It's not a stud, it's a dud. So the reason why the system is in place is because anybody can do it. Somebody that doesn't have the gift of gab, somebody that hasn't been in front of the room enough to say, I don't really want to be up here, but I'm going to be up here because I know I'm, you flew me out here. i got to tell you something, right? So the people who don't have that, the people who are shy, the people who don't have a lot of time, they need the system. So when you're not teachable and when you're not do, using the system, it all fails. And so that, that was my vulnerable. I was not, I thought, I just said, you know, I got to get the gab, I, I know what to say. They're gonna, everybody's gonna get started. And when people weren't getting started or when people were getting started and falling off, I was like, what the heck? Oh, duh, three ways. <laughs> it's the system. Inoculate them by putting them on the phone with somebody else. Inoculate them by saying, look, you don't, I, you know, I, don't, I didn't have to answer anything. All I did was put you on the phone with them and they answered all your questions, remember? So can you do that? Can you put your friends on the phone with that person and they get their questions answered and they get started? And can that duplicate? Sure, right? So be teachable. Um, and so we're ending here. I know you guys are want to stay another hour. Um, <laughs> but, you know, create your own narrative and don't let anyone else do that for you. And that comes with our mindset. That comes with what we believe about ourselves, how we feel about ourselves, and what we allow people to tell us who we are, what we are. Because nobody can give that to you. Only you can give that to yourself. And that starts with becoming more, feeling better about yourself, attracting better for yourself, respecting yourself, and teaching other people how to respect you. Own your mistakes and learn from them. This is a part of being accountable, right? We're all gonna make mistakes. If you don't learn from them, that's a problem. Mm -hmm. All you can do is get better. So make a mistake, forgive yourself, and move on. And that's the next one. Forgive yourself. Give yourself some grace. We're going to miss goals. We're going to mess up. We're going to say the wrong thing. But I've learned in this business, something you, you can't really say the wrong thing to the right person. And you can't say the right thing to the wrong person. Mm -hmm. right. Continue to grow. Continue to become better. <clears throat> forgive yourself and move on. Learn from it and be better. Don't, don't hold yourself hostage to that thing or to those mistakes that you made, okay? And then last but not least, stop attaching rejection to your worth. That was big for me. And that's in every area of life. We, you know, somebody breaks up with you, you feel like, what's wrong with me? When they had the issue the whole time. <laughs> Listen, we all go through, men, y'all go through it too. Not just women. Right? But you have to really be intentional about attaching the worth to the activity. We say marry the activity, date the results. Mm -hmm. It's just that simple. It, it, a no is a no. It just means who's next. And it means they're going to come back anyway when they have a situation that they're not in right now. Absolutely. That has happened. P Ten years can go by. If you stick with this business, years will go by. And somebody will call you and say, are you still doing that legal thing? Because I lost my job. I need an opportunity now. Oh, man, I'm being sued. I wish now, well, it's 25% discount. Don't say that. <laughs> but honestly, like you, you could have had it before. But yeah, no, I'm still doing it. And you'll get a discount. I'm glad you called. Right? So it's, it's, it's okay to get a no. It won't kill you. It might hurt at the moment, but it won't kill you. And it just means, so what? Someone's waiting. Some will, some won't. So what? Someone's waiting. Mm -hmm. Next. Next. Who's next? Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. right? So that's it, guys. I mean, when we talk about mindset, just remember motivation, inspiration, 
navigate between sacrifice and self-talk, examplership, and being teachable. You can shift your mindset and everything will change for you. So, so. Congratulations.